Hi guys, welcome to the next section, Analyze and Understand Networks Using R. In this section, we will implement graphs in R. Next, we will see Use Case and Data Preparation. After that, we will look at Product Network Analysis. Lastly, we will build an R Shiny application. Now, we move on to the first video of this section that deals with graphs in R. In this video, we're going to take a look at creating a graph. We will also see some more structural properties of a graph. After that, we will have an overview of some of the graph algorithms available in the iGraph package. Let's use the R package iGraph for our graph analysis needs. We will leverage the A rules package to manipulate our data. You can use the session info function from the utils package to look at the packages available for you in the current session. First, we will create a simple graph and plot it here. This graph plot is produced. Let's zoom the plot to have a nice view of our graph. After including the iGraph library, we use the graph from literal function to create a simple undirected graph with six nodes. The iGraph package provides the plot iGraph function to visualize the graphs. There are several ways in which we can create a graph. For a complete list of the different methods available to create graphs, you can visit this link. Now, we will create a directed graph by defining the direction of the graph by just adding the plus sign while defining the edges. Let's run it. Here is the directed graph that we created. You can see the arrows now showing the direction of the edges. Let's look at this code snippet to show the vertices and edges of the graph. Let's run it. This shows the edges of the simple graph. Here are the vertices of the simple graph. Here are the edges of the directed graph. This shows the vertices of directed graph. The E and V functions give the edges and vertices of our graph. Let us now change the properties of the graph using this line of code. By calling the name property on all the vertices, we change the names of our vertices from A, B, C, D, E, F to Alice, Bob, Charlie, David, Eli, and Francis. And by using the set vertex ATTR function to add or modify an attribute. In our example, we've added a new attribute called age. Let's select the lines and run it. As you can see, the vertices name has been changed in the plot. Further, based on the age property, we will change the color of the vertex. Now we will run it. As you can see, the graph shows colored vertices. The vertices are green, where the age attribute is 11, otherwise they are red. Structural properties, such as degree and strength, help us understand the underlying structure of the graph. Many graph-based algorithms use these properties. Let's see degree of a vertex. The number of edges adjacent, that is, either entering or exiting a vertex, is the degree of a vertex. The degree function gives the degree of all the vertices in a graph. We use the E function to refer to our graph's edges and add weights to the edges. Next topic is strength of a vertex. The strength of a vertex is the sum of the weights of the edges adjacent on that node. The strength function gives us the strength of vertices in our graph. Let's look at this small code snippet to find the degree and strength of a graph. Let's run it. Here, we can see the degree and strength of all the nodes. The function degree and strength in iGraph package can be invoked to get degree and strength. Now, we will look into adjacency matrix. Any graph can be represented as a matrix, called the adjacency matrix, where the rows and columns are the vertices of the graph. The presence of a value in a particular cell indicates an edge between the vertices. The cells can be populated with the edge weights too. The get adjacency function returns the incident or the adjacency matrix of our graph. Let's run this line of code to find the adjacency matrix of a graph. You can see the output here. Function get adjacency extracts the adjacency matrix from a given graph. Till now, we created some simple graphs. It will be better to have some larger graphs to study the structural properties. The R code for a lot of different networks built from a diverse source of input is available at this GitHub website. 
Now, we will use the U.S. Airport Network from the repository to show some structural properties of a graph using this highlighted code. Let's run it. We first download the file from an internet URL and use read graph function to successfully create a graph. Now we will see some structural properties. The first structural property is centrality of a vertex. The centrality of a vertex in a graph defines the importance of that vertex in the graph. Centrality can be calculated in a multitude of ways. Degree centrality is calculated based on the in degree, that is the number of incoming edges, and the out degree, that is the number of outgoing edges of the graph. Let's look at the code to find the degree centrality. We use the degree function to find the degree centrality score. We have sorted it in descending order. Airport 0 has the highest centrality score. In this case, we've used both the in degree and the out degree. According to this analysis, Airport 0 must be some important node in this network. Next structural concept is farness and closeness of a node. The farness of a node is defined as the total distance of one node from all the other nodes. Closeness is the inverse of farness. Another way of looking at it is that closeness is how long it will take to pass a message from a node to all other nodes. Using this code snippet, we will calculate the closeness using the iGraph package. Let's run the code. You can see the output here. We have nested multiple functions. Let us untangle them. First, we use the function closeness to get the closeness property for each vertex. We pass that output to sort function and sort the results by decreasing order of closeness. And finally, we use the head function to pick the top 10 results from the sort output. Now, we will see an overview of some of the graph algorithms available in the iGraph package. First algorithm is finding the shortest path between nodes. The shortest distance between two pairs of nodes is the path with the least amount of nodes in it. Using this line of code, we will see the shortest path between two nodes in our simple graph. Let's run the code. Here is the shortest path between Alice and Alice, Alice and Bob, Alice and Charlie, Alice and David, Alice and Eli, and Alice and Francis. The shortest dot paths method gives the shortest paths between our node Alice and all the other nodes. The node David is far away from Alice. Another algorithm is random walk on a graph. Starting with a vertex, it takes the specified number of steps by selecting another vertex at random. Using this highlighted line of code, we will implement a random walk. Let's run it. We see that the algorithm moved to Bob and came back to Charlie. We hope this gives you an overview of how to use the iGraph package. Let's now move on to our use case and see how we leverage the iGraph package to solve our problem. In this video, we've learned to implement graphs in R.